There was a time when aerospace engineer Warren Woody Holberg wouldn't have thought twice about swapping his tenure-track faculty position at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT in Cambridge for the chance to become an astronaut. But when NASA called in early June to say he had beaten the 1,500 to 1 odds of being chosen for its next astronaut class, Holberg was deeply conflicted. The 31-year-old, who joined the MIT faculty in 2014, had become deeply and happily enmeshed in his academic career. He and his students had just flown a lightweight, long-duration drone built with the help of a powerful software tool for optimizing airplane design, called GPK-8, that he had created. The U.S. Air Force, which has funded the work, hopes to use the drone to maintain communications during disaster relief. But Hoberg was already thinking of many other uses. His research team had so much momentum that it was hard for me to just end it, he says. Ultimately, however, Hoberg couldn't resist NASA's offer to become the first astronaut candidate plucked from the ranks of tenure-track faculty at a major U.S. research university. Next week, he will report for work at NASA's training facility in Houston, Texas. But before leaving MIT, he's finishing up a task unique to academia, making sure his students and projects have a continuing home. I think we have a bunch of ideas that are really powerful, he says and I want to set up my students to continue that research. Lee denied Hoberg's initial plan was to maintain a formal link with his many projects by going on temporary leave from MIT. Although Hoberg and the other astronaut candidates hope their two years of training at NASA's Johnson Space Center will be followed by a chance to go into space, he wanted to hedge his bets. It's a little unclear what will happen after the training ends, he explained. So Hober requested a two-year leave of absence, he says, which would have covered the initial length of training at NASA's Johnson Space Center. But somebody said number I was basically advised to resign. Hober says, I'm not complaining. Becoming an astronaut is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And it was pretty wild to be told, as a junior faculty member, that this other amazing dream of mine had come true. So on August 28th Hober will sever all official ties to MIT and he has spent the last two months working non-stop to hand off his various projects. One big one is the drone, which the Air Force dubbed Jungle Hawk Owl A.A. chose. It was originally the product of a capstone design course for MIT undergraduates that Hober team teaches with Mark Drillo and Art John Hansman two long-time professors in MIT's Aero Astra program. Now, the aircraft is ready for more development. Drilla doesn't dabble much in the branch of mathematics, called convex optimization, on which GPK-8 relies. But he is familiar with the software which Hober believes has the potential to become a commercial product. And Rilla, who works on physical models to simplify complex systems like commercial planes, has agreed to supervise two of Hoberg's graduate students.
GPK Byte has gotten a lot of attention, and people are using it, Hobart says. One of the students is really excited about a possible spin-off. But right now that's just one idea. Hoberg's departure has created a more immediate problem for his colleagues finding the third person to co-teach the capstone course in the future. We're disappointed that he's leaving because Woody had put together the software for the course and it had worked out really well, Brillo says. Another challenge says Hansman, will be transitioning the drone project from a student class model to more of a research-based model, and replacing those students who were part of the project but have graduated. Hansman has been co-principal investigator for J.A. Chose and will take over full responsibility and he's also taking a few of Hoberg's graduate students under his wing. The J.A. Cho team has been working with the Air Force to get government permission for the drone to carry heavier payloads, Hoberg says. He's also been thinking about how a solar version of the diesel-powered aircraft could help climate scientists to monitor ice caps during the 24-hour solar summers. NASA threw a monkey wrench into those plans when it picked Hober out of a pool of 18,000 applicants. Mental workouts Hober knows his life will change dramatically next week when he begins his astronaut training. But that doesn't mean he won't be thinking about research. A lot of the training is physical, and some of my best research ideas have come when I'm working out, he says. So, yeah. I think I'll still be able to think about these things. Despite his move to Houston, Hober expects to make periodic trips back to the Boston area. In addition to maintaining informal ties to his colleagues, Hober will be visiting his partner, Polina Anakiva an associate professor of materials science at MIT. I've tried to embarrass her in Rice University, which is in Houston, he says. But she really wants to stay in Boston and keep up her research group here. So, we'll be accumulating a lot of frequent flyer miles.